to send her where she will also die. I can't. At the end of the video, you're, uh, where are you walking uh, Misha Business to? I was uh, walking her to my. Got cased up with the wrong crowd of people, really. Um, unfortunately, when I started experimenting with drugs. The purpose of this hearing is to make sure that you understand what this. Number seven, Kamia Gamet. The Michigan Court of Appeals assured the continued incarceration of a woman whose insolence infuriated a judge and whose brutal slaying became the topic of a cable TV episode. In a unanimous decision release, the court affirmed Kamiya Gamet's first-degree slaying conviction. Gamet is serving life in prison for the violent May 2013 slaying of her boyfriend, Marcel Hill, 38. Hill had 11 sharp force trauma wounds and other injuries believed to have been inflicted by multiple weapons, including a frying pan, a floor lamp, an end table, and a long knife. Well, the way I was portrayed, everything, mostly everything was lies. There was a little bit of truth, but mostly I was convicted. With the cries of help that he screamed as you plunged that knife in and out of his body. You stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. I agree with the family, I hope you die in prison as well. You know, if this was a death, you, you put in 11 more to make sure he was good and dead. So I have to appeal my sentence. They got legally aired. A jury rejected her contention she was acting in self-defense and convicted her in March 2014 of the state's most serious offense. Gamut had argued on appeal that, among other issues, Jackson County Circuit Judge John McBain failed to remain impartial by showing favor to the prosecution throughout the jury trial. Gamut further contended her video recorded statement to police should not have been presented to a jury. She said she was not in a position to waive her rights and speak with authorities because she was intoxicated, her blood alcohol level was found to be 0.18 and deprived of food, sleep, and medical attention. In the video, Gamut behaves unusually. She goes into a fetal position on the floor, screams, and throws about furniture. Number 6. Taylor Shabuzanus a Wisconsin woman found guilty of slaying and dismembering an ex-boyfriend and scattering his body parts was seen laughing in court as jurors were shown a new video where she revealed in graphic detail how she played with his corpse. Taylor Shabusinus, 25, gave disturbing details in the police interrogation video about choking her ex-boyfriend Shad Therian, 24, fatally and how much she liked it. She also revealed that her lover's head was allegedly the first thing I took off. I was sucking and cutting at the same time. I liked it. I didn't know what to do, Shabuzna said in the video. You know, the jury had to decide the facts. They had to decide whether or not my client was guilty of uh, first degree intent. Right off the gate, right out of the gate, uh, you know, analyzing, getting all the materials, organizing the materials. You're jolly. Right. Um, I think it was probably about eight or nine months or so. Typically. At the end of the video, you're. Uh... Where are you walking uh, Misha Business to? I was uh, walking her to my... Just transported then to the uh, Green Bay Police Department? Yes. Uh... Authorities said Shabuzinus strangled Therian at the Green Bay home he shared with his mother, physically exploited him, and dismembered his body, leaving parts of it throughout the house and in a vehicle. Therian's severed head and genitals were found by his mother in a bucket in the basement of her home. Green Bay Police Department Detective David Graff testified that Shabuznes had allegedly confessed to cuddling with her former boyfriend's headless corpse after the slaying. She described how she had intimate contact with the body in terms of playing with his castrated genitals, Graff testified. The Brown County jury deliberated less than an hour before convicting Shabuznes of homicide, third-degree physical exploitation, and mutilating a corpse in the February 2022 slaying of Thyrian. The trial now moves into a second phase to determine whether Shabuznes was mentally ill and should be sent to a mental institution or should go to prison. Number 5. Jennifer Ann Me. Jennifer Ann Me, dubbed the Hiccup Girl due to her chronic hiccups, transformed from a beloved media sensation to a convicted slayer, capturing the nation's attention anew. Born on July 28, 1991, Me found fame for her uncontrollable hiccups, appearing on national TV shows like NBC's Today Show. However, a sinister twist in her life story unfolded in 2010. Me enticed a 22-year-old man, Shannon Griffin, whom she met online, into a vacant home. There, her co-conspirators, Laren Rayford and Lamont Newton, ambushed Griffin, robbing him of less than $1.50 and shooting him four times. ...of her denied appeal, the hiccup girl speaks out. Here's ABC Action News anchor Serena Fazan with this... ...got cased up with the wrong crowd of people, really. Um, unfortunately, when... 
I started experimenting with drugs. This case stormed out, emotions running very high, a lot of tears being shed, but the most visibly shaken was... Further damning evidence was the discovery of Mee's DNA on Griffin's shirt. Despite her attorney's claims of her suffering from schizophrenia and her hiccups being a symptom of Tourette's syndrome, she was declared competent to stand trial. In 2013, Mee was convicted of first-degree slaying and sentenced to life in prison without parole. Her co-defendants, Rayford and Newton, also received life sentences. Number 4. Ming Ming Chen In January 2017, Ming Ming Chen was sentenced to 22 years in prison after pleading guilty to involuntary manslaughter, child endangerment, and harm of a corpse in relation to the demise of her five-year-old daughter, Ashley Zao. According to the Stark County Prosecutor's Office, Chen, who was 30 at the time, was not eligible for a capital sentence as the slaying was not premeditated. Being duly cautioned and sworn, deposes and alleges that she has knowledge, information, and belief. Sunset Strip Avenue Northwest, Apartment 11. Yes, I'm sorry. And then Attorney Thorne and Attorney Will, have you had the opportunity to receive a copy of the complaint and then discuss that complaint with Ashley's body was discovered concealed in a restaurant co-owned by Chen and her husband, Liang Zhao. Both were arrested with Chen charged with the slaying and Zhao with complicity. Zhao, after testifying against Chen, pleaded guilty to obstructing justice and corpse harm and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. The authorities stated that Chen had hit Ashley repeatedly in the head before she was reported missing, and Zhao found Ashley's lifeless body with a green fluid seeping from her mouth. After unsuccessful attempts at CPR, they notified the authorities. Post the incident, Chen and Zhao's older daughter was placed under the protection of children and family services. Number 3. Isabel Martinez The mother accused in the deadly knifing of her husband and four of her children in July 2017 was convicted and sentenced to life with the possibility of parole for the slaying charges plus 21 years for the remaining counts to be served concurrent Isabel Martinez was convicted on five counts of slaying and one count each of aggravated attack and cruelty to children in the third degree. On July 6, 2017, Martinez called 911 telling dispatchers she had just knifed her children and husband, 33-year-old Martin Romero, at their Emory Lane home in Loganville. Um, Ms. Gerald is going to give you some information about the court hearing today. And then we have a list of attorneys who operate independent offices who can be appointed to represent you, the bond you have. The purpose of this hearing is to make sure that you understand what the murder will not actually occur because you can go to court before you reach that date. If you have only misdemeanor charges, you do not have any... Gwinnett County police officers found a man and four children knifed fatally. Investigators identified the young victims as Isabella Martinez, 10, Dakota Romero, 7, Dylan Romero, 4, and Axel Romero, 2. A fifth child, Diana, who also suffered a knife wound, was found and rushed to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, where she underwent emergency surgery. She has been recovering with family members since. Neighbors said the family had moved into the area about five months before the violent knifings and seemed normal, but some said Martinez fell into a deep depression after the demise of her father. Martinez, who is a Mexican national, exhibited odd behavior during her first appearance immediately following the slayings. Martinez could be seen grinning while the hearing was underway. As the judge talked about the case against her, Martinez held her arms open and swayed back and forth. At one point, she held her hands together in a prayer position and nodded at the cameras. Martinez continued making a scene, getting up from her seat, laughing and giving the camera two thumbs up, clearly mentally disturbed. Number 2. Tiffany Moss a 36-year-old Georgia woman was sentenced to be put down by lethal injection after a jury convicted her for starving her 10-year-old stepdaughter. Tiffany Moss is set to be put down for a crime that is so horrific it is difficult to even imagine. Moss was found guilty of slaying, cruelty to children, and concealing a slaying. Authorities found the body of Imani Moss burned in a galvanized steel trash can in late 2013, according to the district attorney's office. An autopsy found that Imani, who weighed only 32 pounds, was starved. The girl's father, Iman Moss, initially told police that his daughter perished after consuming chemicals and attempted to cremate her body. He pleaded guilty in 2015 to his role in the demise and is serving a life sentence. 18B 1541-1, State of Georgia versus Tiffany Nicole Moss. Count one, finding been signed by your former person. It does. Please give it to the bailiff. 
um... Any exceptions to the form of the verdict by the state? None from the state as to form or... Iman Moss told police that he came home one night and found Imani not breathing and performed CPR on her, but did not call for medical assistance. He said Tiffany then advised him to burn his daughter's body. Uncomfortable with the plan, the girl's father eventually called the police. Tiffany Moss remained calm and emotionless in court as the verdict was read. She represented herself during her trial, but never offered any defense nor cross-examined any witnesses. Number 1. Brianla Cooper Brianla Cooper will now have to spend the rest of her life behind a prison cell after her 19-month-old son's body was found lifeless two years ago in the Chattahoochee River. Cooper pled guilty to each count she faced, including malice slaying. Her son, Fahim's body was found on July 1, 2021. Cobb County firefighters were at an event at the river when one of them noticed something floating in the water, a little body. Detectives spoke with the child's mother, and she told them a man kidnapped Fahim because she owed the man money. The mother claimed she did not make any reports because she was scared, the DA's office said in the press release. She then told police she left the motel where her son was taken and relocated to another one. A new Anuna mother accused of killing her child and dumping the body in the Chattahoochee River has been sentenced to life. It was devastated to know that, uh, you know, Everyone was right next door. Cheryl Robinson. But when investigators reviewed video from both places, they did not find any evidence of her son being kidnapped. Police later spoke to Cooper's mother, who said she last saw Fahim five days before firefighters found his body. Her mother then gave police a description of her car where they were able to track her location. It showed that she was at the river on June 26, 2021, for about two hours. Police said it was during that time when she slayed her son and left him deceased in the river. That's all for today, folks. We'll see you next time.